In the previous lesson, I showed you how to use JDBC to retrieve data from a MySQL database and then to print it out to the console. So I'm now going to show you how to pass that data instead to the GUI which we created in the previous lesson. So you need to go to my website. We're now on JDB6. And we're going to have a look at this get pupils method. So let's just compare this with the print pupils method we've used before. You notice the print pupils method has got a void return type. It was just printing to the console. It didn't need to return anything. But my get pupils method is going to return something. It's going to return an array list of students. And we set up this student class wrapper in a in the last lesson. There it is there. Okay, so here we go. So there's my array, my get pupils method here. We create an array list of students, and most of this stuff is just the same. But the difference happens here in the while loop, because on my print pupils method, I went through the re, the result set, and I just printed out everything a line at a time. I'm going to do something slightly different this time. When I go through the result set, I'm going to create a new instance of a student. I'm going to set the attributes of that, and I'm going to add that student to my array list. That's that part here. And I will do that for all the students in the database. And then that will get returned when that uh, pupils method, that get pupils method is called. Okay, so I've now got a way of getting the pupils and returning them as an array list. So I'll just take that here, take that code there, and I'm going to copy that across to here. And there we go. And I'll just fix the imports so it recognizes that array list. Okay, so I've added the get pupils method. I now need to get the get pupils method added to the GUI. So let's take a look at this. This is from last time. I'm just going to make a couple of changes to my uh, GUI display students frame. So the first thing you'll notice, I'm going to add in this parameter to the constructor. And there we go. Because we need to be able to pass across that array list. This is really just passing it across here. And the other slight change we're going to make is down here. Uh, is on the scroll pane. I'm now going to go through on this for loop here. I'm going to loop through. We'll copy that there and put that in. So I'm going to loop through those students and I'm just going to append them to the text area one by one. At the moment I'm just adding the for name and the surname. You can do the rest yourself later on. Okay, let's just format that and make that look nice and neat. Okay, and then the last thing we've got to do, let me just go across to my method here which is calling everything. This is no longer working because my GUI display students, my constructor now needs that extra argument in there uh, which is going to have the array list of students. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to call my get pupils method. And that will return my array list of students and that will pass it to my GUI display and hopefully that will print them all out. Let's have a look and see if this works. I run that. And blue code student doesn't exist. So let's have a check of this. Blue code student doesn't exist. And I think I know what the error is. So let me just go back to my DBase class there. And you'll notice I'm taking some old notes here. I've got a capital S there, a little S there. I call my student table student to lowercase s. So let's just change that. I'll run that now. And there it is. It's added the students. Now I could tidy this up. I could get rid of that sample text part there. And I could add on the extra data, the gender and the form at the end of that. But I'll leave that for you to do.